The disruption caused by the 2020 global pandemic will have far-reaching impact across the world's workforce and how companies operate, including the field of law. Dean Sander Egger is here with more. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, hi, Elsa. Nice to have you. Nice to be here. Thank you. Okay, Dean, so can you share the key results of the 2020 Future Ready Lawyer Survey and what they actually reveal? Yeah, sure. Um, so when you look at legal, uh, the legal profession, we've seen about a billion dollars a year uh, of investment in legal technology over the last several years. So when we surveyed um, attorneys, we wanted to understand what their perception of, of legal technology is. And the biggest thing I guess that we got back is that there's a sense that in the next three years, the practice of law is really gonna shift a fair amount as we see these new technologies come in. And, and you think about the pandemic, how do I talk to my clients? How do I access the courts remotely if we're not in person? But also things like uh, analytics where we're able to see how likely is a particular court case gonna be successful before we go into court? Or if I look across a whole bunch of contracts, what are the typical terms that we see on those contracts? Am I getting a good deal in my negotiation? So we really see that impact of technology being adopted in a much greater sense over the next three years. And what are the other big trends that you expect will impact the legal profession over the next few years? Yeah, I think that outside of the impact of technology, and I think that that is a huge thing, I think you see a couple of business trends that are going to come in. I think one is uh, you see a rise of what I would call a paraprofessional. The, the, the biggest analog I would see is the nurse practitioner in the medical field, where you have a licensed a provider of legal services, but that's not a fully accredited lawyer that's passed the bar. And I think that the second one that you see in, and you see this just a recent decision in Arizona from the bar there, is the ability for uh, non-lawyers, if you will, people who are not lawyers to own portions of a law firm or legal services firm. And so that then gives rise to things like accounting firms or other corporate entities providing legal services. Both of those trends in the business of law, if you will, will provide price pressure to reduce fees uh, for services and will provide a lot more capacity uh, to provide services for folks like you and me who probably are not in front of lawyers on a very regular basis. And what will be the top priorities for the legal profession during this time? I think that as the concept of value shifts a bit in, in law through the automation of routine tasks, which is really the impact of technology, I think you have to start to talk about how is it that you're providing value to your customers? And, and that's really getting closer to their specific needs. Um, and then I think that the technology is just table stakes at that point in time. So lawyers really from a priority standpoint need to lean in, understand legal technology and adopt it as part of the process. And where can our viewers go for more information, Dean? Sure, Elsa. Um, if they just go to their search engine, Google or whatever have you and type the words future, ready lawyer. Uh, it will come right up. It's really the first result that you'll see. And it's a free study. Download it. And I think it's a really fascinating read. All right. Dean Sander Egger, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. And we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this. Stay tuned.